Before starting the interview, let us have a brief introduction about Dr. Venkati Raman. Dr. Venkati Raman is a Ursula Zollner Professor of Cancer Research at Cambridge University. He is also directing the MRC Cancer Unit. Before doing his PhD at Uni University College London, he trained in medicine at Christian Medical College, Vellore, India. Now, as I understand that you have a medical background, so what inspired you to become an active researcher? As you said, I actually trained in medicine in India and one of the things that uh, motivated me to go into research was she simply the sheer load of patients. As a practicing physician, um, there is a limited number of people that you can see and do things for and I rationalized perhaps when I was young that doing research one might uncover new approaches to the treatment or management of disease that might have a far broader impact and that was one of the motivating factors that led me to research. But the other factor was actually access. So when I was training at Velour, um, Professor Jacob John, who many people in India will know for his pioneering efforts in the area of polio immunization, enabled undergraduates like me to work in his laboratory and we often had to do this at night because as you know research is not part of the Indian medical curriculum. But that exposure to doing research was the other thing that motivated me to do it um, subsequently in my career. Moving to next question, uh, uh, as you are working on chromosome instability, how this knowledge can be exploited for personalized cancer therapy? So as you probably realize, uh, cancer is an exceedingly difficult disease to treat and there are obviously very many reasons for that. But one of them is simply the genomic complexity of cancers, particularly solid tumors. As they evolve, these tumors acquire more and more mutations and multiple different biochemical pathways are deranged. So by the time patients present in the clinic, the tumors, if you will, are a mess. And it's very difficult to identify what you can do to treat them at that stage. So genome instability actually drives this process and leads to the complexity of tumors and furthermore, even if you can identify targets to hit, genome instability in cancers often quickly leads to resistance. So some of the features of genome instability are actually the features that make cancer very difficult to treat. So my own interest is twofold. One, how can we understand better the fundamental role that genome instability plays in cancer pathogenesis. And the second, which is really what you asked me about, how can we use that information for better approaches to therapy? And I'll answer the second part because that's the focus of your question. We can use that knowledge, I believe, if not now, soon in the future, to target tumors exhibiting different kinds of genome instability. In other words, genome instability itself is a phenotype of cancer cells that may make them more vulnerable to certain agents. At a very simple level, if a cancer cannot repair DNA, then X-ray radiation or other genotoxic substances may actually make, kill those cancer cells much more effectively. At a more sophisticated level, there's a new generation emerging from research done in the last 10 years of agents that target genome unstable cancer cells and one well-known example are the poly-ADP ribose polymerase inhibitors, the PARP inhibitors which seem to target tumors which have genome instability. My feeling is that these are just the beginning and that there is a lot more to do to exploit genome instability in devising new approaches for cancer and that's why I'm interested in this area. And the second hope that I have there is that because genome instability occurs so early in the genesis of cancer and because it's so important for the genesis of cancer, perhaps we may in future even be able to find ways to prevent events associated with genome instability, which I think would be far more promising if possible than therapy. Very interesting. Uh, 
what is more important anti cancerous drug development or going into its mechanism of action uh, that's a very interesting question and i'm sure you will get different answers from different people and obviously it's because uh, cancer is a very difficult to treat disease people die from cancer so on the one hand it's clearly important to find drugs that do work regardless of how they work but on the other hand the cancer drug resistance occurs very quickly and without understanding mechanism it's impossible to predict and it's very difficult to address treatment resistance but most important of all we know now from the work of the last two decades of clinical science that cancer drugs do not work equally effectively in all cancers instead some cancers tend to be more sensitive to certain drugs so stratifying drugs so that you treat the right patients with those drugs almost inevitably requires knowledge of mechanism so i think these are the two sides of the coin for me that's it and now any message you want to give young researchers working in india um it's difficult for me to give um any salient messages um i trained in india as i said uh, myself but most of my career has been spent overseas as you may know i now spend nearly 2 to 3 months a year at the new center i'm helping to develop at the national center for biological okay. sciences in bangalore and one of the things that i feel i can say um uh, is a very positive message to younger researchers in india the science that i see going on not just in bangalore but all across india as i've been working here for the last few years is tremendous all across india there are world class groups and the government thus far seems to be committed to funding uh biomedical research in india it's clearly very important for india so my message would really be look at the opportunities within india as well as outside india because i think the opportunities here are blossoming thanks thank you very much.